Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and welcome to this week's edition of Business in Hawaii. I'm Daylan Yanagida and we are broadcasting live from the Think Tech Studios in downtown Honolulu. If you want to join us, we are live at www.thinktechhawaii.com. And you can also subscribe to our programs and get on our mailing list at that site as well. The theme of Business of Ho in Hawaii is to share with you stories of local businesses by local people. And they share with you how they were able to build successes in a challenging environment. Today in the studio, we have Tom Walker, president and founder of oh Ohana Nui. Tom is also a baker of super delicious cookies that I'm super excited to try. <laughs> um, Tom, welcome to our show. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Please share with us um, Ohana Nui, um, who you are, where okay, you came I, from. I, I came from New York, worked for 30 plus years in advertising, publishing, design, photography, all creative industries. I came over about five years ago for a month to do a, a, a photo book for a, a best known uh, renowned National Geographic photographer that lives there, Paul Chesley. Um, so I came for a month to edit and sort of as a design, and then it grew into a year, and five years later, I'm still here. Um, but Paul was sort of pushing, oh, you like it here, and you go to New York, and I was sort of tired of New York, and I want someplace new. And um, I have no desire to go back. Fantastic. Well, so, that's great. <laughs> and and uh, Ohana Nui sort of came out of looking at opportunities. You know, I love packaging and, and branding. And I, I found that the, the New, York, New York is a very crowded, jaded market. It's, it's, there's so much of everything. Here, there's such an opportunity, particularly in the tourist market, for high-end products. And I love beautiful packaging. Um, and that was sort of the beginning of it. And seeing that, OK, you've got year-round tourism. It's a lot of it comes through Honolulu. Um, could I create something for that? And um, Ohana Nui's experiential brand, in other words, the products are trying to capture in taste, smell, sense, you know, what the experience of Hawaii is to take home as a remembrance of your visit or to give to friends back home to make them jealous. <laughs> so I started with cookies because it's, I, besides being branding, um, I love to bake. And um, the choices here are, you know, the limited, thought, okay, there's an opportunity to do something a little different. So I actually brought some to try. Um, these are the Paniolo <laughs> cookies. They are in three different oh, nice. flavors. And they're sort of done as gift boxes. They're all macadamia based. And so the artwork on your boxes are you? You, you right. Wow. They're sort of based on, on um, sort of old artwork, but I tried to update it. This is actually um, Kaimana Beach. And then you have Diamond Head. Right. and Mauna Kea, so they're kind of narratives in themselves, so they're, they're precious objects. Um, the first cookie is... Oh, oh beautiful packaging. It's a little die cut on the side. I brought some milk. Oh. You're obviously a marketing person, you <laughs> <of> everything. <laughs> exactly. So here you can pour yourself a little milk. Thank you. To cleanse your palate between Ooh, the flavors. The production staff needs some of this. <laughs> So the challenge here is the humidity, and you need to create a cookie if you want it to be, you know, sort of dry and crunchy, which I am. Um, how do you get, keep it that way, make it different? This is, has crystallized ginger in it. Oh, nice. So it's, it's butter, crystallized ginger, macadamia nuts, wow. a few other things. All right, guys, here it goes. Mmm. I'm a huge crunchy cookie fan. That hits the spot. Okay, so I was trying to find local flavors, and I um, this next one is leaking pineapple. So it's oh. candy pineapple. That's so good. That right? Is it sort of got? Oh. And then you get the chew. You get the crunch. You get the chew. It's sort of. And it's not that artificial ginger flavor. It. Oh no, that's well. You know, it's I. There's different points in my life of, of like epiphanies. I had a three ginger cookie. I want to say like 20 years ago, and had ginger powder, ginger. You know, Chris, I, I've always tried to like chase the monkey on that. And then this is like, oh my God, that sort of gets it. Um, now this next one that is sort of, get it. this is a little different because it has the, the sort of the saltiness of the lihimoi sprinkled oh, okay. over the pineapple, which is a lot sweeter than this. So it, it, it's a good counterpoint. Mm. That saltiness goes really, really well. 
That is amazing. Yeah, they're kind of different but the same. You know, you get the crunch and the so chew. Um, and they actually hold up well in the humidity. If you leave the package open, they get soft. I have friends that prefer them that, that way. That's so good. I need Not some bad. of those. <laughs> um, I didn't bring the third one, which is a um, mocha chocolate, which has a little bit Amazing. of lemon rind and it has a chew in it, too. Amazing. Really? And um, <laughs> they're available at um, Island Olive Oil in, uh, in Ward Center and in Kailua Center. And then we're launching in Neiman Marcus in oh, about wow. two weeks. And I have a top secret fourth flavor we're doing just for them. So in November, Neiman Marcus. And so um, the olive oil company, Ward Center, uh, Kailua? Kailua Center, I think. Mm -hmm. And then at Neiman Marcus. Neiman now, Marcus. with those in mind, higher end, um, high type, high line. So is that your target? Very much so. You know, it, it, omiyagi, if you know what that is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I lived in Japan as a kid, and I've always remembered these, their, their attention to detail and packaging and presents, presents to give to, the, to people. And I found when I came here, you know, it used to be you'd always take home Hawaiian host macadamia nuts like now they're everywhere okay can we create something that you can only get in Hawaii you can't get anywhere else maybe it's a little more expensive but it has a presence to it so that was the whole point behind this and I also I, I, in developing this I've also looked at other lines of other products not only cookies but things that scented products um, fashion items and how can mm -hmm. we expand this so I'm not a cookie company I'm an experiential brand Omiyagi um, something special that they can't get anywhere else but here. So can we expect that out of your omiyage line, the high, the high line mm -hmm. of omiyage, that we'll see other things? Oh, lots, yes. I've, I've been working on this for a, a few years, but I have a whole line of products. because I, I, I don't believe that what I'm selling is a cookie. I mean, that's part of it. But if it doesn't work out, you've got to change and have another product. Or if that doesn't work, to change it. So the whole idea is something that represents a portion of the island, either in smell, taste, or those things that were you, you remember from being, being here. And so, oh yeah, I've got a good five, 10 other things I'm looking to create. But so we're starting this with this. baked in your home, is it? No, it's a, we're a kitchen, an incubator kitchen downtown. I'm actually oh, nice. looking to expand. And we just really got the cookies into the store in the last couple of months. So um, prior to that, it was kind of a year testing it with people and giving sample boxes out. Um, so now we're just, it's the big thing is the expansion, which is the other challenge in, um, about when you start a business, like, is it scalable? Talk to me about that. Yeah. Um, well, again, I think when you're going with a high-end item, and I think particularly if you do um, um, research in terms of, of, like, products and cookies, there's not a big profit margin on a cookie per se. It's a fragile product, so there is a lot of waste. So how can you create greater value to it in terms of packaging? So we're looking at things that are probably cost a little more, but the greater value to the, to, the, mm -hmm. to the user. So everything we're looking at is like, OK, is this something I would have someone to pay a little extra to take home that is just not a bag of cookies from Safeway? And every product is like, OK, whether it's a candle or whatever, is it uniquely Hawaiian or can I get it somewhere else? And I think the big challenge today is the economies of scale, where you have local businesses pushed out by you know, chain stores. Right. And everything's kind of the same. And it's sad, as I've done a lot of traveling in my life, there was a time you'd go someplace, bring something home that no one had. Now you go, and these, th these things are like, I mean, Dubai, they had Hawaiian host macadamia nuts there. Mm, okay. Um, so for those folks out there who are watching and they're saying, well, I've always wanted to start a, a food business, how do you? Where do you find your resources here in Hawaii? I, the interesting thing, and the first thing I have to, I'm constantly reminding myself is the internet. And the things that are available today that weren't available five, 10 years ago, just if you want to know how to run a business, if you're looking for online like accounting services, if you're looking for recipes, testing recipes, or you're looking for success stories. I think a lot about starting a business, it's one thing to have a passion, but is it a worthwhile business to get into? And there's a lot of stories already out there. And if you research cookies alone, you knew, you can sort of see where the sweet spots are and aren't. And you learn very quickly from other people's successes and mistakes. And mistakes are a great way to learn. And you'll make them and we'll all make them. But again, if you can already experience that through someone else, so much the better. Then, um, you know, getting resources, the whole idea that you don't have to go, you, you know, through a phone book, if you remember, you know, the yellow pages. You go online, you can see if it's available, you can order, and thank God for Amazon Prime. 
and I can't tell you how many things I've ordered from there just to test, to try, and then once you figure out, okay, that's the product I want, hey, where can I source that on a wholesale mm -hmm. level? Um, but those things weren't available five, ten years ago. So starting something like this would have been a very different effort five, ten years ago. So as an um, owner of a startup, you have a great product, you have partners who are um, wanting to put, put you out there, the olive oil company. Mm -hmm. and um, Because of the age of technology, are, do you feel the pressure to, to go online that you have to? No. And I come out of um, particularly my advertising background is digital media. And social media is a big time suck. You need to do it, you need to be there, but particularly in, in, for a business that's really focused on a local, develop the brick and, or, or sorry, the, 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 the relationships, develop the market locally. You can take a lot of time setting up a website, and you do need that. You need to be on Instagram, you need to be on Facebook, but those come after the fact or in parallel. Um, first and foremost, get a good product, understand what your audience is and where they are and how to get to them. Um, this has a lot of things to distract you out there. So I know that there's a very large story behind Ohana Nui and the three pillars that you've developed your, your brand by. Um, with your packaging, did the inspiration on the packaging come from these three pillars? Because I think that's what makes Ohana Nui so yeah, special. I, in fact, it gives me chicken skin. Well, it's interesting because I find being in Hawaii, being in paradise, and Hawaii is a global brand, and everyone has a vision of what it is. Now, when you live here, and what's the novelty of being a tourist where it's off, what is Hawaii? And there's so many different versions of that, and I, I, I'm always in awe of another person comes and gets enthused about another thing here. And, and what is paradise? What is it to be in paradise? And there are certain things that resonated with me in terms of the culture here and also the culture that's come in from, that are brought in from the Japanese and Portuguese. And it's like, how can you sort of add to that and also highlight what's already existed in respect to the local cultures? Um, it's just an interesting, unique place. And it's the only place for what, how many thousands of miles? It's just amazing. And there's very few island cultures like that, say Bali, Hawaii, that have that kind of international recognition when you say the word Hawaii. And if you can distill that into a package, you'll be a success. So I know that you recently had like a, a launch event or a yes, tasting yes, event. Yes, we had a wine and cookie tasting. Tell, tell us about that, how'd that go? Um, well, uh, the, the whole, uh, you know, part of this, the inspiration is also kind of like biscotti. These are double baked like a biscotti to be crisp. Um, they said pay, pair up very nicely with wine. So we did a you know prosecco, rosé, and a white, and with three different cookies, and worked out very well. And then, and then some milk for the cakeies. So perfect. Well, I I unfortunately missed the event, but I we're going to have another one in Kailua in uh, October. Fantastic! Yeah. I can't wait. These cookies are amazing. Thank you. We're going to go to a quick break. Um, this is business in Hawaii, and we'll be back shortly. I'm Ethan Allen, host on ThinkTech Hawaii of Pacific Partnerships in Education. Every other Tuesday afternoon at 3 p.m., I hope you'll join us as we explore the value, the accomplishments, and the challenges of education here in the Pacific Islands. Welcome back. This is Mrs. in Hawaii, and today my very special guest is Tom Walker. Tom is the president and founder of Ohana Nui. I got a chance to taste these amazing cookies. They're very unique. They're not like other cookies that you that you may um, taste, you know, with some Hawaiian branding and and whatnot. They're they're very very special. Thank you. Um, but where I want to go um, in in this last half of our show is how special Ohana Nui is because it's not just an omiyage company, um, a Highline omiyage company. It is founded on values, pillars that are 
whole so much more telling. Oh, gee. Okay. <laughs> Let me. Please. Yeah. To oh, oh, share with oh, us. Oh, I sort of feel like there's there's three areas you need to look at. Is one, you know, who's your audience? Can you give a, a quality product to them? Something that takes back, captures the essence of Hawaii, and also that the locals can enjoy too. Um, so it's understanding who your audience is, but two, also understand who the community you're working with, particularly in the business community. And I would say this for people that are starting out. I belong to the, the Hawaii Venture Capital Association. Um, there's several organizations that you can get involved. Just get to know the people because you learn a lot and you can work together. You know, one of the side things that I'm looking to, to uh, with a few other companies here is helping them with their branding and developing how their businesses work here. It's a small community and you learn from them. And you also feed off the energy. When you hear success stories like, oh, they did it, I can do it too. That's important because you can beat yourself up and thinking, oh, it could be better, or I should have done this. When you hear other people going through it, it gives you that sense of connection. Um, so very important to be a play, a part of that community. And also understand island economies, which are kind of unique, because you have sort of this close ecosystem, limited resources, limited you know, ingredients and manpower. Can you create something that, say, when it gets successful, doesn't leave the island like a lot of brands do? Mm -hmm. um, again, this is more about quality, not quantity. So if we can do different products and work with other people who are creating products here, maybe bring it through the Ohananui brand, so that it's recognized to represent quality, unique products, limited quantities, then your price point goes up for them and everyone benefits. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of that, you know, how do you make the island economy work? Um, and then the third part is giving back. And I was looking for something, and you know, everyone, you know, coming out of marketing, everyone's working, looking for, you know, it's called cause-related marketing, like tie into something and it'll resonate and I've been looking to something to tie into and because I'm very, I swim a lot, I love to, um, I'm at the beach a lot and I do a lot of underwater photography, I've been um, involved in Kaimana Beach which is featured on one of the little boxes. I think we even have a, a picture that yeah. we might be able to throw up of Kaimana, um, right? Do we have okay, yeah, anyway, no. so th these are, this is one of the, the turtles that lives at Kaimana and Kaimana is kind of a special place in that um, um, it's a very popular local beach. Not as many tourists get down there, but there are two endangered species that love that beach. Monk seals, Rocky who gave birth recently, and the green sea turtle. And they live and frolic with the people. They seem to be fine with the people on the beach. Um, so I'm, I, I'm out there every other day. This is Rocky who I, I captured. This is two hours after Rocky gave birth to, oh, to the seal that was named Kaimana. What a picture. Um, yeah, I actually had, had come back from New York on a red eye, and I, I just wanted, I'd been gone like two or three weeks, I just wanted to go swimming, I just wanted to see my turtle friends. And I got down there, and Rocky had just given birth, and I you know, had my camera, got up on top of the building and you know, shot down. Amazing. It, and it really is a special place. And the fact that nature and people can sort of exist together there is pretty amazing. Um, I was there a couple weeks ago shooting with my GoPro, and someone said, my little turtle friend, who I call Curly, of, Larry, Mo, and Curly, like three students, um, had a wire around his neck. So I swam out there and photographed him. Oh my God, he's just laying at the bottom. He's coming up for air, but he's very tired. So I got back to land and um, talked to land, you know, talked to the lifeguard and got the number of the turtle hotline for the, the Hawaii animal, um, marine animal response team. Got a machine. Oh, you know, he's going to die. So I raced home. But okay, even it's illegal to, to touch a bother turtle. I got that. But I was so worried about, okay, if I get busted for this, so be it. I'll put up a GoFundMe, I'll raise money. But I grabbed like nail clippers, scissors, whatever, just ran back down. Luckily, before I got there, they called back. And a woman from the uh, Hawaii Animal, or Marine Animal Response Team was there. She organized a bunch of us tourists to go out, told us how to hold the turtle, and she cut off the wire. And we got the lure off, and the little turtle, you know, sat swim away. And I thought, okay, this is who I want to give to, because it was so immediate. And um, it, it's, it's a strange place. I mean, there's some fishermen there. And, it, you know, it's just the ecosystem is such that there's... Um, is that the actual rescue? Yes, that's oh the, the, rest, the rescue. Oh, my goodness. And what was great about what they did is Brittany, the woman, um, got the wire off around the turtle's neck. And then we all sort of... She helped... We sort of helped her get the lure off. The hooks will actually dissolve, but the lure could hook on something and, okay. and whatever. So, and the turtle was really chill. I mean, I think he was tired, but I also think he knew we were trying to rescue him. Mm -hmm. But I mean, this is like five minutes walk from the house. And um, what's amazing, I think for anyone that's in Hawaii, 
is, is I'm mean, first year to I'm discovering the island, the hiking and the sailing, whatever. When I discovered the underwater, there's another whole part of this island that's incredible to, to know about. And um, it's changing, the ecosystems are changing. The pollution, the rising temperatures, anything we do to you know, preserve or help um, the environment. So very much Ohana Nui is looking to give a percentage of profits to that cause. So again, this whole idea of like looking at your audience, servicing a good product, work within the business and local community to do something that has value, and then to give back. And I think when you do that, there's a sense of satisfaction that comes. It's very different than just, oh, making money. It's like, oh my god, this person just like emailed me and said, thank you for saving the turtle. Um, you can actually, I had the, uh, the GoPro with me, so I videotaped the whole thing. If you Is go to right? ahananuilife.com, you can see the video oh, of wow. the save. And um, it was exciting. And, and again, if I can somehow help that cause. Actually, um, the, the rescue of that turtle was actually covered. Uh, I don't even know where it was covered. but I, It was on the news. They, they actually called me and got, I gave them the video and everything. It, it, was, it was amazing. Yeah, was amazing. I, I just, I, 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 I am so impressed by the response team being there so quickly, but also engaging the tourists rather than saying, stand back, we'll take care of it. Enrolling them in the process, I think made an advocate. Everyone felt they were helping saving. Mm -hmm. And I think that resonates out that we can all make a difference to the environment here. And um, again, at a time where we see these hurricanes everywhere around the world, mm -hmm. it would make a difference. So very much a Hananui, we want to make a difference, one cookie at a time. <laughs> so how, how did you um, put your three pillars together? I mean, the, uh, the alignment is almost, um, almost magical, right? Because uh, well, you have a passion. You have a passion for the ocean, photography, advertising, marketing. Here's the thing is I find whenever, and I've worked a lot of across publishing, photography, advertising, once you focus on something you want to do, the opportunities you see just come alive. They're always there, but you sort of filter them out because it's not about what you're looking for. But if you set yourself up to want to do something and then open your eyes up to the possibility, and again, you have to be careful to fall in and sort of the trap of like, oh, I'm in a cookie business, I'm gonna make this happen. Right. No, I'm looking to create a product that ends up being a successful business right. that gives back. You see other opportunities. So that's, that's I think, a large part of, of being aware of the opportunities, also aware that you might make some mistakes. You gotta take a step back and turn direction. So being flexible in terms of what you're doing um, and be able to make a, a course correction. I've had a number of guests who talk about um, entrepreneurship and startups and that Hawaii is a perfect climate for, for entrepreneurship and, and startup businesses. When you decided that you were going to start up a business, mm -hmm. was it the cookie that drove it or was it the passion for... It, it was the desire to live here. <laughs> and I've always been entrepreneurial, even though I've worked in the corporate world, I've always been involved with startups. So it was an opportunity to bring together everything I knew. And again, comparing this to New York, I was like, oh, there's such opportunity here. It's like, oh, why don't they do this? Why can't we, you know, I, it, it was just so obvious. And because it's the only game in town for thousands of miles, it's sort of, it, it's doable. You know, I say, you know, a lot of when you do cookies, you're looking for a distributor. Here you can go to all the stores yourself. You can build, divert, you know, direct relationships with each of the store owners. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's sort of missing from a lot of, um, you know, more recent, you know, product development because the mainland and the big cities are kind of full, filled with chain products. You, there's no one to talk to to say, do you like this? Here, I, I know a lot of the, you know, I, I actually met um, the, the, the couple that run Island Olive Oil live in my neighborhood and I was introduced to them on the street by the fellow that owns, do you know the Newt? Yes. Store. Mm -hmm. So they live in, in uh, we all live in the same sort of complex. So it was just meeting them on the street and say, oh, you know, he's doing cookie. Oh, we have a store. Why don't you do my cookie in this, our store? And it grew out of that. So the relationships you develop, you know, just casually end up being your business relationships. And um, I, that's one of the special parts about, you know, I think, just living in Hawaii. Absolutely. And being, particularly in Honolulu, there's such potential. And we have this endless you know, tourism year-round, take advantage of it. There's so many things we can do to, um, to service that, that industry. The conversations that um, 
people have to connect their businesses together. They're authentic, they're organic. Um, and I, and I, I think you're right, that's, that's what's beautiful about um, entrepreneurship and startup businesses in Hawaii is that you can network. But you have some experience in that. What about for those folks who this is their, their, their first rodeo? What, what kind of advice do you have for them? Well, again, you know, first of all, we're living in such a credible place. So it's just inspiring to be here. And I think that sort of drives you to figure out, OK, how can I greater take advantage of what's here and what's unique about this place? But I, I go back to the point of like the internet. If you don't know something, it's easy to learn. And never assume, OK, this is not rocket science. We're not sending someone to the moon. This is not you know, brain surgery. You're not <laughs> this is basically. You know, get on the, if you don't know something, get on, and there's a YouTube video on it. If you don't know how to do bookkeeping, if you don't understand social media, there is something on it, on, on the web. And that was not available 10 years ago. And I constantly am reminding myself how fortunate it is to be living in this time. Could not have done this 10 years ago, 20 years ago. It just wasn't possible. Um, so take advantage, and also the local organizations, the Venture Capital Group, and other small business um, so uh, the small business development right. mm -hmm. um, group is very helpful in understanding what needs to be And in business place. owners here have that aloha spirit in them. Yes. And they're yes. so willing to mentor yes. entrepreneurs. And I think that's it's magical. Um, we have just a couple minutes left, but I'd love for you to tell our audience, first of all, where to find you. Um, um, you can go, website. the website is ahananuilife.com. Um, at the cookies are available at Island Olive Oil in the Ward Center and Kailua Center. And in November, they will um, be in Neiman Marcus on the third floor. Fantastic. Um, I wanted to thank you for joining us and sharing Certainly. Sh sharing your wonderful <laughs> cookies. I can't wait for the, the production yes. staff to try them. Um, but good luck to you. And I'm, I'm going to be looking for you. And I'm going to tell the story about your packaging and, and your passion. And the turtles. So and the turtles. And the turtles. Um, unfortunately, we are out of time. But thank you to our guests and the awesome production staff here at, in the studio. If you would like to be a guest on our show, please email your information to shows at thinktechhawaii.com. Business in Hawaii airs every Thursday at 2 o'clock. And we look forward to seeing you here next week.